Ukraine's president is comparing the recapture of Kherson to the Allied landings in France on D-Day in the Second World War. Speaking via video link to a Group of 20 summit in Indonesia, Volodymyr Zelensky says both moments are watersheds on the road to eventual victory. The retaking of Kherson was one of Ukraine's biggest successes in the nearly nine-month-old Russian invasion. But large parts of eastern and southern Ukraine remain under Russian control. And fighting continues with strikes reported on Ukraine's power grid and city centers. Well, with us now to discuss the state of the war in Ukraine is John Hardy, deputy director of the Russia program at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. Mr. Hardy, welcome back to Forum Daily. Thanks for having me. Now, before we jump to Kherson, let's talk about what's been hitting headlines today. Uh, missile strikes by Russia targeting Ukraine's energy grid have seeped over the border to Poland, ended up killing two people in Poland. Now, considering that Poland is a NATO member, uh, let, let us know what are the latest developments in this situation is and how this will likely impact the war going forward. Sure. So uh, I think you know, first we need to kind of take a breath and just wait for all the details to come out. You know, there'll be a, a technical investigation. Um, at that point, uh, uh, it sounds like Poland is it's convened the National Security Council. Uh, perhaps there'll be some sort of Article 4 con uh, consultations under the NATO uh, treaty, which, which basically just allows any member to call for consultations with other members. Um, I expect, you know, uh, all the allies will keep a level head. Um, you know, this sort of thing isn't really something you, you start a war over. Um, you know, if it, if it was a Russian missile, missile, which it sounds like it was, um, I think we'll assume it's accidental until until proven otherwise. All right. Well, in terms of the uh, situation in Kherson, we know Ukraine's president seems to indicate that the war is close to ending following the retaking of the city. But is that really the case, especially considering these recent missile attacks? Well, I, I wouldn't say the war is anywhere close to over. Unfortunately, it will probably drag out uh, for for quite some time, certainly into 2023. Um, from there, it's really anyone's guess. But th there is a lot of hard fighting left ahead for Ukraine. They've made a lot of you know really significant gains in Kherson and, and, and uh, elsewhere. But th there is a good bit of tough fighting ahead. And how might the success uh, at Kherson uh, impact Ukrainian military operations and strategy going forward, especially as the uh, winter months approach? Sure. So um, it's going to be a huge boost in morale, uh, first thing, and, and probably the opposite for the Russians. Uh, I think both sides will um, uh, redeploy some forces away from uh, you know that area um, towards other other sectors, um, either because you know on the Ukrainian side they want to you know launch another counteroffensive. The Russians, I think, will have to um, you know counter that. Ukraine has the strategic initiative, so they're able to dictate when and where the the big uh, next big battle happens. And I think Russia will, will kind of have to react to that. And they might try to uh, reinforce some of the areas where they're still trying to make gains. Now, considering, as you say, uh, this might be impacting Russia's morale, uh, what factors led to Russia's withdrawal after this eight-month occupation in Kherson? Sure. So um, I, I think that the main thing is that Ukraine for months now has been uh, striking the, the key bridges over which uh, Russia brought in supplies uh, uh, to supply its troops on the western side of the bank uh, of the of the river, and you know over time, uh, uh, just continued to supply that those forces just became untenable. The position just became untenable. Uh, I think the the Russian command made the military prudent decision to um, you know uh, push Putin to withdraw uh, over the river, which he eventually you know obviously did, despite I think you know resisting that that urge for a while. And how is Russia reacting to the recapture of Kherson, both uh, operationally and strategically? Sure. So, so I, I mentioned, you know, the redeployment. I think that's that's already underway. Um, some forces seem to be moving to the Zaporizhia Oblast. Uh, Russia is trying to consolidate uh, a line of defense along the eastern bank of the Dnieper. Um, I think Ukraine would probably have a pretty tough time crossing that river. Uh, that would not be an easy operation. So I, I expect the, you know, the uh, kind of center of the fighting to shift elsewhere. All right, Mr. Hardy, a quick uh, 30 seconds left here, but what are you keeping your eyes on as this war progresses? So for me, it, it's Russia's mobilization. I want to see, you know, some of mobilized forces have already entered the fray. They don't seem very well trained or equipped. I want to see if the rest of them, which I think is probably the majority, um, get any sort of better training um, in the weeks and months ahead. All right, Mr. Hardy, thank you again for joining us today on Forum Daily. Thank you.
Stay with us. We'll be right back. And after the break, we're going to be taking a look at the major headlines and news stories from around the world. As the world's population hits 8 billion people today, according to the UN, cholera is spreading around Haiti. Iran is urged to free detained peaceful protesters. And a new report finds that automatic braking reduces accidents. We'll have these stories and more news from around the world after the break. So stay with us. Forum Daily will be right back.